Okay, um, this is a Morin Wright Micro 2000. Um, you can find these all over eBay. Nobody wants them anymore. Um, I got this out of a junk <laughs> junk pile for free uh, quite a while ago now. Um, it's made by Morin Wright, Sheffield, England. If uh, you don't know Morin Wright, they're like the high end premium uh, machinist grade, this or that. Um, they're just really, really good stuff. And they made one of these. I don't know if it was the first or one of the first or one of the best. It's a uh, digital caliper. So zero to one inch uh, digital caliper. And it's really cool because it has the display on like a, like a old calculator display, like an HP 35 calculator display. So we'll turn it on. You can see, you can see little bitty digits there. Uh, let me turn the, turn the room lights off. Maybe you can get a better look at it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, as you pull back on the thing, it opens and closes. And uh, here's a, uh, a test block. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, 0.104. And uh, 0 0.1044, 0 0.1045, 0 0.1044, 0 0.1044. Yeah, so it's uh, it's super super accurate, and it works on optical technology. It has a uh, a grating in it, and light bounces off that grating, and as the sensor moves back and forth across that grating, it gives little ups and downs, and uh, does the uh, uh, does the measurement that way, so it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's um, it's actually still useful because it's very very fast, uh, much much faster to use than just a normal caliper. I mean, you put it in and you close it and you're done. I mean, that's quick. Nor normally you have to like flip the little caliper and anyway, this is just super super fast. Um, one of the problems these things have though is. Uh, if you move it out and you move it back really quick, you can see that it loses counts. Um, and uh, they know they knew that when they built it, the uh, circuitry couldn't keep up with things. So uh, when you, whenever you press this, it zeroes it. So it's very easy to zero. But you can see that it's working just fine now. And that's because they control how fast the uh, caliper can close. And uh, let me uh, let me open it up and, and show you inside. It's it's pretty cool. All right, so uh, it's powered by these batteries in the back. That's why I had it out, because one of the batteries is going bad. Um, and uh, so there's, uh, there's some cool uh, circuitry in here. You can see kind of the optical component. There's a little uh, photodiode or something that, with a prism that looks down. And then there's another thing on the back that maybe is the illumination. And then the grading grading's in the middle there somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so here's the uh, here's the display. You can see that it's giving you a little dot 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 dot. That means one of the cells is going bad. So I need to work on that. So these cells just pop out, um, and uh, they are. These kind of these coin cells, they're one and a half, or actually I think they're NICAD, so they're like 1.35 volts each. And uh, I, I had a, uh, I had, I tried to find a pack of four, and I found one that had three together, and, and I took the wrapper off of those, but had three together, um, and I had a separate one. Um, but now one of these cells has gone a week, so, I'm going to see if I can try to revive it by putting uh, like one amp through it and see if I can wake it up. Uh, but right now, one, one of the cells dies really, really quick, and I just don't feel like buying more of these. They're pretty cheap. These are uh, Varta V250H, so I think they're two, 250 milliamp hours, so they're not all that powerful either. Made in Germany. Um, but you can still buy these things. And, yeah, I don't know if I really need this thing working or not, but I was playing with it and it was sick. So uh, let me see if I can uh, kind of zap these things. Well, uh, these batteries aren't uh, these batteries aren't uh, worth saving. They're uh, all gone and past their expiration date. One of the problems with NICADs is you have to be constantly charging them all the time, otherwise they go bad. So these have gone bad. At least two of the cells are not up to snuff any longer. So, 
it doesn't like to work on the on the charger all by itself for some reason. It needs a little bit of extra oomph. Uh, so a lot of old calculators were that way. They wouldn't work without a battery on them, even though you had them connected to the charger. So I thought I thought what I'd do is I I've been saving this for a long time. Uh, I have one of those little kind of little mini super caps. It's a 0.1 farads. Uh, five and a half volts, so it's perfect for this application. So I think I'm going to tack that in here, and uh, it uh, it supplies enough uh, current while the charger is plugged in to uh, to operate. So uh, I don't mind operating this thing off the wall charger because um, it's kind of big and heavy anyway. I'm not going to take it anywhere. I'm just going to use it over in the metrology lab. So I'm just going to um, pop this little capacitor in there and uh, call it call it good. All right, there's my little uh, capacitor, and it's uh, tied into the circuit over here. And I have the uh, charger connected, and uh, let's see if I can focus on that. Uh, let's see here. There we go. So it's working just a treat. Okay, uh, I don't think that little capacitor will, I'll unplug it now, and again, and now it's completely dead. So yeah, so the AC connector has to be on, and it has to charge up a bit, and then it works just great. Oops, then it works just great. Sorry about the horrendous camera work. Oh my god, I can do better than this. <laughs> So, um, Lauren Wright, Micro 2000, zero to one inch. Uh, like I said, all kinds of some all kinds of cool circuitry. If I uh, flip it up here on its edge, you can see uh, sort of a, there's a big huge piece of glass here and another piece of glass that rides on top of it, and it uh, those two kind of act as an interference with one another. Uh, you get like a beat frequency as they go back and forth. Um, oh, I know. I wanted to show you the one thing on the top here. Uh, let's see here. Let me let me rearrange the camera so I'm not fiddling with the thing. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. This is the coolest thing about the whole thing. I mean, the optics is cool too. But I'm going to slide this thing open, and you can see that this is a plastic tube filled with like glycerin or something, some type of liquid. And it's sealed off, and as you flip it over, it's like pinching, pinching the tube between these rollers. And so when it comes back, it has it has perfect resistance because it's that tube. You can imagine almost like a surgical tubing, like the way that it feels as it's sliding through a constriction. And that's the thing that dampens it. It's a really cool mechanism. I don't know who thought of that, but that's just super cool. Um, super super cool. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, seems to be working. Let me uh, let me button it up.